Hi, and welcome to the Assemblies Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So today I'm visiting the Media Archaeology Lab, and we're going to take apart an old computer and see how to fix it. So let's get started. Today we're going to take a look at the Commodore Amiga 500. The Media Archaeology Lab has several of these, but this particular one has a sticker on it saying that it won't boot and there's something possibly wrong with the floppy drive. So let's go ahead and we'll stick in the workbench like it's asking and see if it does anything. So it's a continual challenge in the Media Archaeology Lab to keep all the machines running. The goal of the lab is to provide working machines that people can come in and play with at any time. So we're continually fixing up stuff and making sure it's working. So as you can see with this particular Commodore, when you put in the disc, nothing happens. I've never actually worked on a Commodore Amiga before, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to dive in and see what we can find out and demonstrate some techniques for taking apart old computers along the way. Here are some tools that we're going to use while we're trying to repair the Amiga. So obviously here's the computer itself. I also have a magnetic project mat and these are invaluable for keeping track of screws and other small metal parts. You can actually put them on here, they'll stick, and then you can use a dry or wet erase pen to jot down notes about where the screws came from. And then finally I have a magnetic screwdriver as well as a screwdriver with a whole bunch of different hex heads and other bits that you can fit in. So one thing about working on the Amiga is just from looking at it I can tell this is a consumer grade computer and not a hobbyist computer. So I can already tell that it's going to be a little bit trickier to get into say compared to a Apple II. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at how to take it apart. Commodore made between 4 and 5 million of these Amiga 500 computers and you can clearly tell that they didn't want people to get inside them. So they got Torx head screws that they've used here to prevent people from taking it apart. Now when you're starting to work on one of these computers, one of the things to look for is which screws are actually holding the body of the case together versus screws that are actually holding internal components. I can clearly see six Torx screws around the outside of this case. There are another two screws here, which I'm not quite sure if those are actually holding the case together or holding some sort of internal component and there's also a recessed screw over here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with the six Torx screws because those are obviously holding the case together and then we'll see if we can actually pop it apart first. Now obviously I could look on the internet and figure out how to take it apart but it's actually sometimes more fun to just try and figure it out yourself as long as you're careful and you remember where things go. I've taken out the six Torx screws and I've labeled them with the word case so I remember where to put them and now if we just flip it over we can see that the top just comes right off so those are the only screws holding it on you can see now there is a lot of metal shielding inside this computer so unlike an Apple II they really took radio frequency interference seriously and here is the keyboard which apparently isn't actually secured by anything so that just lifts right out uh, looks like there's a cable down there as well as a grounding cable over here on the right that connects to the floppy drive. To get at the actual floppy drive, it looks like we're going to have to take off this ground screw over here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Flipping this over, we can now see that those two screws that we weren't sure what they did before are probably holding the floppy drive down. So let's go ahead and we'll unscrew those now. All right, still won't come out. So let's go ahead and unscrew that recessed screw and see if that makes a difference. One thing to keep in mind when you're taking apart a computer like this is there's typically two types of screws. So in addition to the different type of heads on these, if you look at the threads on these two, 
This screw on the left is designed to screw into a machined hole, while the one on the right here with the coarse threads is designed to screw into plastic. So if you ever get confused and mix up your screws, that's one way to tell which one goes to which. So fine threads goes into some sort of pre-machined hole, whereas coarse threads like that go into a plastic mount. All right, the floppy is loose, but it's still connected to the motherboard, so we have to be a little bit careful with these wires here. So let's see if we can actually unplug it from here rather than have to take apart the shielding. When you're taking cables off like this, sometimes on these older computers, there won't be a way to indicate which side is up and which side is down, so there's no notch. So what I like to do is actually just take a picture before I go ahead and disassemble it. And that way, if there's any questions when I'm reassembling it, I can just look at the picture. Here's the floppy drive. So this is made by Shannon, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it's an F354E, which is the standard floppy drive that was in these Amigas. So when I took it out, I noticed that it's making some sort of rattling sound, which doesn't really sound great. Let's go ahead and we'll open up the shielding on top of the case here. And it's already lost its stickiness there on that. And looking in the drive, I can actually see the problem. I don't know if you can see that from where you are, but there is a shutter from a three and a half inch floppy drive that has come loose and is just in there. So this is really good news. If we can get that out of there, then everything might just work. doesn't take much to actually clean these little heads like that. So one thing to keep in mind with these three and a half inch drives is there's a head on the top and the bottom. So unlike the Apple II floppy drives, you need to clean both of them. All right, it didn't actually look that dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reassemble everything and then try it out. Here's the moment of truth. So it already sounds better. I can hear it actually asking for the disc, which it wasn't really doing before. So let's go ahead and put in the workbench 1.3. And the drive light is coming on. All right, there we go. So it looks like it is working great. We saw how to fix the disk drive on a Commodore Amiga 500. Just keep in mind, if you're working on these old computers, make sure to keep track of all of the screws as you're taking them out so you can put them back in in the same order. So I've successfully fixed my first Commodore Amiga 500 and now I can go ahead and I can fix the rest of the computers in the Media Archaeology Lab. So thanks for watching.